Hey, God bless you, brother and sister. Welcome back to my channel, Grow in Faith, Grow in Christ. I'm excited about today's video. The title is, Does God Really Love Me? But make sure if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. And if you haven't turned on those post notifications, turn them on so that you can be alerted every time we post a brand new video. So let's jump right into the study today, brother and sister. I know this video is going to be a blessing to you. The title is, Does God really love me and i want to read you something before we start it's in the book of hebrews hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 look what the word of god says and i want you to pay attention this is how we can know how god loves us amen look what the bible says hebrews 1 verse 1 through 3 long ago at many times and in many ways god spoke to our fathers by the prophets you know the old testament prophets a prophet is someone who speaks or preaches for god right but in these last days because we are living in the last days he has spoken to us by his son now look at this this is how we know that god loves us he's not speaking to us through prophets he's speaking to us through his son not saying that there's not pastors and preachers and teachers that's not what this verse is saying what it's talking about is a beacon of salvation a lighthouse of salvation jesus christ is the one pronouncing salvation to us today through his death and resurrection on the cross right but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things through whom also he created the world he is the radiance of the glory of god and the exact imprint of his nature and he upholds the universe by the word of his power after making purification of sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high i want to read you the beginning of verse three one more time he is the radiance of his glory and the exact imprint of his nature brother and sister how do we know god loves us the bible tells us in the book of hebrews that jesus is the exact character of God. He is the exact radiance. He is the exact fingerprint, thumbprint, imprint. Whenever you read about Jesus, brother and sister, that's exactly what God would do. Whenever you hear something Jesus say, that's exactly what God would say. Whenever you see how Jesus reacts in the Bible, that's exactly how God would react. Brother and sister, one of the ways we know how God loves us is because when we read the Bible, when we read the Old Testament and the New Testament, when we read how Jesus moved, brother and sister, that's exactly how God is moving. And that is an example to us to show us how much God loves us. One of the stories that, you know, jumps out to my mind to, to show us how God really loves us. Remember, always through this whole study, keep in your mind, Jesus is the exact fingerprint of God. He is the exact resemblance of God, the exact radiance of God. How Jesus speaks, that's exactly how God would speak. How Jesus acts, that's exactly how God would act. As a matter of fact, remember, Jesus said, I don't go anywhere unless my Father sends me, and I don't say anything unless my Father gives me the words to say and one of the stories i can think about is when jesus was by the temple and he gave a story of a tax collector and he gave a story of a pharisee and the bible says that the tax collector was on the ground and he wouldn't even look up to god and he was just hitting his chest and saying lord forgive me a sinner see because in those days jewish people that were tax collectors were looked as betrayers because they were working for the roman government so they were seen as people who were betraying their own jewish nation right so this tax collector knew he knew that he was living a wrong lifestyle he knew that he was working for the wrong side he knew that the lifestyle he was living was wrong and when he walked into God's presence he was asking for forgiveness and he was telling the Lord to forgive him and not only that but he was saying Lord have mercy on me a sinner but the Bible says that the man next to him a religious leader was standing up with his head up head held up high and he was saying Lord I thank you I thank you because I give my tithes I thank you because I pray I thank you because I fast and I thank you Lord because I'm not like this sinful man right here like this tax collector right here and Jesus was saying this parable and this is what he asked the men only one man came out that temple forgiven brother and sister look at the heart of God the heart of God is for the person who's repentant the heart of God is for the person who recognizes that they're sinners. The heart of God is for the person who was broken hearted. So when we saw how Jesus said that parable, that heavenly story with the earthly meaning, when we hear that parable, brother and sister, we're seeing that God looks at us. God hears our prayers. God cares for us. God just doesn't throw us to the curb. God just doesn't write us off. God just doesn't say, nope, you know what? That's three, three strikes. You're out of here. You don't belong here no more. You're, you're out of my good favors. You're out of my good 
graces. No, brother and sister, God has his eye on you. So remember, keep that in your mind. Jesus is the exact fingerprint of God, the exact resemblance of God. I want to read you something else. Look what the Bible says right here. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55 through 56. Another way that we can know that God loves us. The first one is because Jesus is the exact character of God. So, I mean, everything that Jesus did and how he gave his life for the people. Brother and sister, the Bible says this, that there's no greater love than a man who gives his life for a friend. In other words, when you lay your life down for somebody, when you do a, a selfless act like that, brother and sister, there's no greater love than that. Have you ever heard the expression, put your money where your mouth is? I mean, I don't know how you can put your money where your mouth is in a more greater way than that. When you lay your life down in a selfless way like that for somebody else. So remember, that was Jesus and not only was that Jesus that was God brother and sister that's how we know that God loves us but I also want to show you this Matthew chapter 13 verse 55 through 56 another way that we know that God loves us is that he chooses normal people God chooses normal people there's a lot of people out there that say man God's not going to use me or God can't love me I didn't grow up in the church or my, my my father you know wasn't a Christian or my mother wasn't a Christian I don't come from a I don't come from a bloodline of believers. You know, I'm not deep in the faith like other people. You know, God loves them and God will use them and God can show his power in them and God can use them to speak his word because, man, they've been in it a long time or they grew up in the church or they have a cleaner lifestyle than me, like a background than me. You know, my past is, is more taint, tainted than theirs. Brother and sister, that's a lie from the devil. Listen to me. When God chose you, he chose you already knowing where you came from. He chose you already knowing who you were. He chose you already knowing what you had done. And he chose you and he washes you. And look what the Bible says. This is how we know that God loves us. He chooses normal people. Matthew 13, verse 55 through 56. Look what the people say about Jesus. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Are not his brothers James and Joseph, Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? Verse 57. And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown and in his own household. Brother and sister, this shows us how God chose normal people. The Bible says that his dad, hey, is not this the carpenter's son? His dad wasn't somebody who made six figures. Now, I'm not saying God can't choose people who are of higher, you know, earthly standard than us or or a higher a higher pay racket than us no brother and sister god can choose those people but just because god chooses people like that doesn't mean that he's not going to choose people that are carpenters it doesn't mean that god's not going to choose people who are normal people average people from low middle class or high middle class or whatever blue collar white collar it doesn't matter brother and sister god chooses normal people the bible says isn't not this the carpenter's son is not his mother mary hey we know his brothers we went to school with his sisters we went to school with his brothers hey man his dad shops at the same grocery store that i shop his mom goes to the same laundromat that i go to and the people took offense let me show you something about people when they saw jesus speaking mighty words the words impacted them and the words spoke to them and the words convicted them but then they started looking at the background of jesus they started looking at his lifestyle and when i say lifestyle i mean his mom his dad his brothers, his sisters. Now the words were powerful because they're the words of God. But then they started saying, hey, hold him up. Why is this guy speaking like that? He ain't nobody special. They ain't nobody special. We know his mom. We know his dad. We know his brothers. We know his sisters. They went to the same school as us. They, they shop at the same grocery store as we do. They go to the same laundromats we do. They're just normal people just like us. What gives him the right to speak words full of such authority? Brother and sister, let me tell you something. People are like that, but God is not like that. It doesn't matter if your dad's a carpenter. It doesn't matter if you're a carpenter. It doesn't matter if your mom grew up cleaning houses. It doesn't matter if your mom grew up like a maid. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. It doesn't matter if you come from the worst background that the world can ever imagine. When God chose you, he did not make a mistake. He does not make mistakes. And he chose normal people to be the parents of Jesus Christ. He trusted a carpenter and he trusted a woman named Mary who was an average woman, two average people. He trusted them. God trusted them to take care and to raise his son here on earth. Brother and sister, if God trusted two average people with his baby boy, 
believe me, believe me, Jesus didn't make a mistake when he chose you. So I want to read you one more verse. We're talking about, does God really love me? The first, the first scripture I read told you how Jesus is the exact character of God. He is the exact imprint of God. So when you read the New Testament, brother and sister, and you read what Jesus says and what he does and where he goes and the people he helps, that's showing you God's love right there. And then, brother and sister, the Bible says that he chooses normal people, average people. He chose Mary. He chose Joseph. His brothers and his sisters of Jesus, they went to the same schools and they went to the same places that everybody else went to. They didn't go to some Ivy League or they didn't go to some private. No, brother and sister, they were just normal people. But let me tell you something. When God chooses normal people, he fills them with his supernatural power. What makes you different is the Holy Spirit. God doesn't care about your background, brother and sister, because your background doesn't anoint you. What God does in your life is he anoints you with his Holy Spirit, and that's what sets you apart. I want to read you one more verse. Look what the Bible says. The study is, does God really love us? Does God really love me? Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. This is an amazing passage of scripture. Let's pay attention because there was people who said, man, you know, in the Corinthian church, Paul was preaching to them and they're saying, man, God really doesn't love me because, you know, I'm not a Jew. Jesus was a Jew and, you know, all the apostles were Jews and I'm just a Gentile. You know, I'm just from the land of Corinth. God really can't love me. In other words, God really can't love me. My, my dad wasn't a pastor. I, I didn't go to Bible school. God can't use me. I, I don't have a doctorate degree. I, I don't know all the definitions of Greek and I, I don't know all the deep, deep, deep things of theology. God really can't love me. But look what the Bible says, brother and sister. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. This is Paul speaking to the Gentiles. For consider your calling, brothers. God has called you. First and foremost, I want you to know God has called you. God has called you to be his child. God has called you to be his son and his daughter. He loves you. He has called you to grow in faith and to grow in Christ. Consider your calling, brothers. In other words, hey, examine something. Look around you. Consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. In other words, I, ain't, I don't see too many PhDs around here and God still chose you. I don't see too many doctorate degrees around here and God still chose you. Now, you notice he says not too many of you. In other words, there, there were some people who had PhDs and doctorate degrees. God will choose them like I told you. God is just looking for a humble heart. But when Paul is speaking to these people, he's telling them, hey, look, everybody ain't a doctor. Everybody doesn't have a PhD and God still chose you because the people were feeling down. They were feeling discouraged like, man, God can't use me. God, God doesn't really love me. Not too many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble birth. In other words, y'all didn't come from, from priestly families and y'all didn't come from royal families. Not many were of noble, no, noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who because became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let me show you something. He's telling the people in the land of Corinth, not many of you were wise, not many of you were strong, not many of you were coming from noble births, but God chose you not because of you. God chose you because of his son, Jesus Christ, because as it is written, let everyone who boasts, boast in the Lord. I want to let you know something. God loves you. And the proof is that he gave you his son, Jesus Christ, on that cross over 2000 years ago. One of the verses that so many people overlook, but everybody knows it, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his one and only begotten son. What is love? So many people want love, but just to take. God is love, saying love is not just for you to take. Love, the proof of love is when you give something. Brother and sister, the proof of God's love is that he gave something. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Not only did he give you his son, but he gave you everlasting life. So the question is, does God really love me? Well, the Bible says Jesus is the exact imprint of God and everything Jesus did, brother and sister, 
proves and points that God loves us. The Bible shows us that he chooses normal people. He chose Joseph, a carpenter. He chose Mary, the wife of a carpenter. His brothers and his sisters were living in the same places and going to the same schools as everybody else. And God put Jesus in that family. So can God use you? Can God use your family? Yes. And the Bible says that not too many of you were wise. Not too many of you were noble. Not too many of you were on the high standard of this world standards. But God still chose you because as it is written, let all those who boast, boast in the name of the Lord. Brother and sister, one of the main, main, main proofs that God loves you is that Jesus died on the cross for the salvation of your soul and the forgiveness of your, of your sins. Brother and sister, that's the biggest proof that there can be. He gave his son to you. He loves you. He chooses normal people. Jesus is the exact imprint of God. That's the proof right there, brother and sister. I know that sometimes we're going to doubt God's love because of our own failures or because of our own mishaps, because of our own letdowns, our own, our own mistakes, our own sins, our own flaws. But I want you to know something. God is not looking for flawless people. God is looking for honest people. When you're honest with God, brother and sister, he'll cleanse you. He'll wash you. He'll do great and mighty things in your life. So, does God love me? Yes, he does, brother and sister. And the proof is Jesus. The proof is the cross. And the proof is your salvation. I mean, look around you. Look around your church. If you go to church, which you should go to church, you should be going to church. Look around your church. Not too many wise, not too many noble. There, I'm pretty sure there might be some people in there that are like that. But everybody ain't, brother and sister. God doesn't reject people. God doesn't push away people. And he did that, brother and sister, so that the name of Jesus could be glorified in your life. So, brothers and sisters, I hope this video blessed you. Remember, Jesus is the exact radiance of God. He is the exact imprint of God. So that's why it's important that we read the Bible, because every time you read what Jesus did and what Jesus said, that is showing you exactly how God thinks and how God will react. And that is the proof that God loves us, brother and sister. Also, remember, the Bible says that he chooses normal people. He chose Joseph, a carpenter. He chose Mary, lived in a normal town. He had normal brothers and sisters and God chose that family. So believe me, if he chose that family, brother and sister, he didn't he make a mistake in choosing you. He chose you on purpose. And remember what Paul said to the Corinthian church. He said, not too many of you were wise. Not too many of you were of noble birth. Not too many of you were strong in earthly standards, but it was done that way so that it can be said as it is written, let all those who boast boast in the name of the Lord. And I also want to make an invitation before I close this video. If there's anybody watching, I want to invite you, if you would like to put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you would like to receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, believe in what He did on the cross, how He defeated both sin and death, and how He resurrected on the third day to give you resurrection power. If that's you, if you would like to put your faith in Jesus, I'm going to invite you, repeat this prayer. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, you shall be saved. If that's you, repeat this prayer this afternoon. Say, Father God, I come to your presence in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins and all my faults. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross for the salvation of my soul and the forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, make me new and give me the strength to live for you the same way you died for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Brother and sister, if you make that prayer, the Bible says you have the right to be called a child of God. So God bless you. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Share this video with somebody. God bless you. Have a blessed day.